Hello and welcome to our latest Cambly live session. To those of you that don't know, I am Daryl. I'm going to be your tutor for today. Welcome if it's your first time. Welcome back if you're joining us again. Thank you so much for coming. Um, wherever you are from, please send a message in the chat. Say hello to everybody. Say hello to us. I want to say hello to as many of you as I can. Tell us your name. Tell us which country you are from. We're going to start in a minute or two when everyone's up and running. I see some already. We've got uh, Rowan says, hey, guys. Normala Baral says, hi. Uh, she's from Nepal. Thank you for joining us. We've got Kalipan uh, who says, oh, you don't know him? I'm not sure what that means, but thank you for joining us. We've got more people. Greetings from Taiwan, from Algeria, from South Korea, Sri Lanka. Thank you for joining us today. If you don't know what Cambly is, if this is your first time, um, I'm going to tell you quickly, and then please stay until the end of the class. I'm going to give you guys a discount code that you can use to get up to, I think, 36% or something like that. So Cambly is a great place to learn English, whatever you need. If you need literature study, if you need to work on your uh, English proficiency test, basic grammar, conversation, you're going to find a good tutor on Cambly. All right, so thank you for joining us today. Uh, we've got more people coming and saying hello. We've got... Uh, I am from Vietnam. That's Akashi Ryan, uh, Indonesia. Kalipan says, hi, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you. Um, Pakistan. Uh, United Cargo says hello. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. So today is our third lesson in literature. So in our first lesson, we, we talked a lot about characters and the different types of characters. In our second lesson, we talked more about story and how story is broken down. And today we are going into theme in a big way. We're gonna discuss a lot to do with theme. So we're gonna talk about what it means. What is theme? Why, why is it important? Why do we have theme in a story? Does it mean anything for us? Does it mean anything for society? Uh, we're going to then look at identifying theme. Remember, what we've been doing with our literature analysis is to analyze, to look at, and try to understand the deeper meaning of stories, books, plays, movies, sometimes even songs. So part of that is to identify the elements. So today we're going to look at how to identify theme. Things you will look for in terms of visuals, in terms of writing, or in terms of the character. We're going to look at all of that today. And then we're going to go through a lot of the common themes. Uh, we're going to give some examples. We're going to talk about what it means. Uh, we're going to talk about books or movies or stories that have those themes. And then we're going to maybe talk about what it means to you or what it means to people in general. And remember, this is an interactive lesson. So please, as I'm going through the different themes and the different stories, send us what you think is a story or a movie or a book or something that matches those themes. If it's a story or something that not everyone's going to know, send a little explanation of what it is. I'd love to see those new stories. If it's a movie or something that everyone knows, send it so we can we can see everyone is on the right track and understand it together. All right, so let's get started with theme. Now, what is theme? Theme, like I said, it's the deeper meaning. It's what is underneath the story. So let's look at one example, and I'm going to use this main theme here that is used a lot in stories, movies, television, good versus evil. So maybe the story is a detective story, and the guy has to solve a murder. He has to find the murderer. So that's the surface. That's what's happening on a surface level. The deeper meaning is it's good versus evil. It's wanting to feel that the good guy will win. The bad guy will be caught. 
the person that was killed, they, there will be some kind of um, justice or something for them and for the family. So even though the story is just a detective story, someone got killed, find the murderer, the deeper meaning is good versus evil, making us feel that good can, can triumph in the world, good will win. So theme is this deeper meaning in the story. And why is it important? Theme is important for a lot of different reasons. Let's talk, talk firstly about personal reasons. A lot of people watch a, a movie, read a book, experience a story so that they can feel themselves that something's happening. Maybe they're gonna learn something from it. So let's look again at that good versus evil story. Maybe someone is not feeling good. You know, they're feeling bad, depressed, but they watch this movie about this really bad guy getting caught by the police Maybe it makes them feel good, you know, that good things can happen. So there's a personal growth element inside themes. As we go through them, you're going to see that a lot of these relate to our emotions and how we feel and how we change over time. So change is another very important part of theme. We want to feel that we can change. We want to feel that society can change, maybe even think that people we know can change. So that is an important part of why we have theme. It's personal growth and change. To understand change, to change ourselves, and to feel hope for the future, perhaps. And then I've written down here life. So why is theme important? Theme is important for society. Sometimes it's telling us something about society or making a statement about society. Let's look at this example again, maybe in this story about the, the cop looking for the killer, maybe he doesn't find the killer. Maybe the writer wants to say, listen, in life, not, uh, the, the, in life, the good guys don't always win. So he's making a statement about life. Maybe it's not a statement we want to hear, but he's saying something about society. So theme is important because it can sometimes tell us something about life. It can help us grow. And it can tell us about change, how people change over time, how we can change. So that's why theme is important. That's why stories are important. Theme is such an essential part of stories because of that. Because it's what we have a story for, to experience that growth and that change. Now, when we're going through a story, we need to know how to identify the theme. Now, again, I've said this in other um, lessons. It's not only books. All right, it's not only stories that are written down. We can identify theme in anything, in a movie, a television series, a book, a play, a poem, a song. There are going to be themes in all of those things and other. Even a game, even a computer game, which has a story that can have a theme that we can identify. So how do we look for it? The first thing I've put here is character growth. As I said, personal growth and change is a very important part of theme. So we can look at what the character was like at the beginning, and then how does he change at the end? What happens? So maybe, this is an example we'll talk about later, maybe someone is addicted to drugs or alcohol at the beginning of the story, and then at the end, he's not addicted anymore. He's gone through all these things, whatever it is, and at the end, he's changed. He's grown up. He's realized he doesn't need that. It's a big change. So we can identify the theme by looking at how the characters change from beginning to end. Then we can look at recurring elements. Recurring means over and over and over again. And this can be, really be anything. It could be a recurring uh, written statement. It could be a recurring uh, musical uh, statement. It could be a recurring visual. It's showing us the same thing, maybe different ways that that thing happens over the course of the story, but it's showing us the same theme. So again, maybe our story about the guy that was addicted to drugs, maybe at the beginning we see the, uh, a close-up of his eye, and his eye is like bulging, and he's addicted, he needs his fix. And then as the story goes, we clo close up on his eye again, and we see it changes, and it's getting better, and at the end, we see his eye is normal. So we can see from that recurring element that 
the growth has happened. And then we can look for the, the deeper meaning ourselves. Sometimes we can find an even deeper meaning from the basics. Maybe the story is about the drugs and he gets better, fine. But there might be a deeper meaning there as well. Why was he addicted to the drugs? Was it a family issue? Did he have a bad childhood, trauma? So that's an even deeper meaning that we can look for related to the theme. So once we've identified that, if we were going to um, actually write an, uh, like a essay or something about it, we would say the theme is this because of this element. And that helps us to understand what the story is about and understand how we or society can change or what the statement about society is. All right, and what I want you to realize is that in a story, there doesn't have to be just one theme. And there doesn't only have to be one character that grows. You can have many characters that all grow in different ways. Sometimes they can grow in a bad way. Maybe someone starts and they're not addicted to drugs and they end that they are addicted to drugs. It's still a statement about something in life, so that can happen. And there can be many different themes in a story. Usually there is one uh, strong one, but there are going to be other themes as well that can occur. All right, so that's our basics about what is a theme, uh, why is it important, how do we identify what the theme is, and the fact that there are many different themes, many different character growth um, arcs that can happen in a story. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go through lots of different themes, the most common themes, and then we're going we're gonna to explain what it means, we're going to give some examples about it, and then we're going to say what it means to us, sometimes it means stuff to us, or what it means for society. And like I said, uh, if you think there's a story that you know, movie, book, whatever, send it through. If you think it corresponds, matches up to one of these themes, we'd love to hear it. If you have any other questions about theme and literature analysis that's related to this, send them through. We're going to stop, obviously, at a few points, and I'm going to go to the chat, and we're going to take a look at what you guys have come up with. So I've put the first one down, good versus evil. We've kind of talked about this already, and I put this as number one because it's the most used. I think almost every um, cop movie, every courtroom movie, every superhero movie, they all have the basic good versus evil theme. All right, so it's, it's very universal. And so because it's so universal, I've kind of put the other theme here together with it of war. Because war by itself can be a theme. So let's just discuss what it means. What does good versus evil mean in terms of being a theme? It means that we're showing that in life, obviously, there's people that are good, people that are bad. What we usually want, as we said, is for the good guys to win. Usually in, in a superhero movie or in a cop movie or something uh, popular like that, the good guys are going to win. It's going to be hard. Sometimes the statement could be that the bad guys win. All right, That could be a statement that someone is making about life, that there's good and there's bad and people are fighting, but sometimes bad people win. Sometimes good people don't win. So that could be another statement that they're making. And this is often what we see in movies or stories about war. They're showing us that there's war, but war as a theme usually tells us that things are complex. So things are not so black and white. In a lot of movies about war, we get to see people on different sides of the conflict and to see, well, they're, they're just people. And maybe they don't know what they're fighting for. And it's a complex thing. And it's not so easy. A great example of a war movie, and if you guys haven't seen it, you should see it, is Saving... Private Ryan. It's a great movie from uh, Steven Spielberg with Tom Hanks. And it shows you that war is, it's not like just good versus evil and good will win. It's complex and it's hard and war is a difficult thing and we shouldn't want war at all. 
Um, obviously, there are so many examples of the good guys winning. I mean, we just have to look at, I'm just going to choose a random superhero and say like a Superman movie is going to be about good guys winning. So that is our first one, good versus evil and war to show us what we want to feel, that the good guys win because that makes us feel like we could win in life. But sometimes the theme is telling us that, you know, bad guys win. Life is not always black and white and easy. So it can be complex. So that is good versus evil. All right. I see someone has written something already. So Stacy Gian has said Harry Potter series has the good versus evil theme. And that is true. That is true. Let's write it down over here. Harry Potter definitely has good versus evil all the time. And I think Harry Potter also has a lot of complexity. It shows us that uh, the people on the different sides of the conflict, they're, they're not always just bad. And they're not always just good. They have different layers. It's a complex thing. And I'm glad that we brought up Harry Potter because the next theme we're looking at is a coming of age or growing up movie. So this is a, a movie about, like Harry Potter, Harry Potter has this theme as well, um, about someone that starts, they're young, they're innocent, and we see them grow up and go through their, whether it's their childhood or their teenage years or their early 20s, we're seeing them grow up and find their place in the world. So that's what coming of age and growing up is. It's growing up, finding, let me, let me turn around, otherwise I'm going to, have a some terrible handwriting here. So it's finding your place in the world and learning. So you're learning about the world. That's why we can see Harry Potter has this theme as well, because it's coming of age. He's growing up. He starts, he's 11. When he finishes, I think he's supposed to be 18 or something. So that's coming of age, growing up. We've got Harry Potter. There are others. Obviously, it doesn't have to be such a big movie or a big story. Um, there are lots of movies about growing up. Um, another movie you guys can look up, try and give you some, some movies to look up that you haven't seen, is something called The Sandlot. It's about a group of kids that play baseball and how they grow up. Um, there's another movie about a one guy that grows up called A Christmas Story. So it's about just this one individual growing up and seeing that life is not <laughs> always fair to him, and that's part of growing up. Why do we need these coming-of-age growing-up movies? We need them, firstly, there is a sense of nostalgia. I don't know if you guys know that word. I'm going to write it over here nice and big. There's a sense of nostalgia. Nostalgia means you look back at how life was for you, and even if it wasn't always the best, nostalgia means you think it was pretty good. So when we watch, uh, when older people watch a uh, coming of age story, they think, well, when I was in high school, this is what I did. And it makes you remember that time. And nostalgia has this way of making you feel good about an older time. Also, it allows us to see what growing up is like. And to, again, show the theme that you start off in a certain way. And as you grow, you change. And that's part of life, that if you're a parent, it'll help you maybe understand your child. If you're a child, maybe you'll say, you know what? I'm growing, I'm changing, this is happening to me. I can relate to that. So that's coming of age and growing up. Let me just circle what we've done here so far. Coming of age, growing up. Again, send us some examples of what you think. Maybe you have a movie or a book that also corresponds to that. Then. Similar to this, kind of going on with this theme, we have innocence to experience. So innocence to experience means it's, it's often called the journey from innocence to experience. And as a theme, what this means is that when you're young or when you're um, naive, again, I'm gonna, we're learning some new words here today as well if you guys don't know them. Even if you're not young, you may be naive which means you don't know everything and you think that everything's going to be great and the world is going to be awesome and you're innocent. You think everything is great. And as you learn about certain things, 
you become more experienced and you realize oh, life is complex. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, sometimes it's nothing, sometimes it's in the middle. And this journey, again, is very, it's something everyone goes through. It's universal. And so we can all understand that. When we watch this movie um, about innocence to experience, we can say, ah, I remember being young and thinking the world was, was going to be this magnificent place and everyone knew what was going on. And then I learned, ah, everyone's trying the best they can. And that's nothing wrong with that, but that's how life is. Now, a very good example of this is a book called, and you guys may have heard of it, The Lord of the Flies. Not The Lord of the Rings, The Lord of the Flies. We're going to talk a little bit about it later. Now, in this story, um, it's about a group of kids, um, teenage boys, prepubescent teenage boys, and they are marooned. They are stuck on an island. Their boat sinks. They get stuck on an island together, and they come from a very... Um, classy school originally. And then they're, they're very innocent. Well, they're innocent in terms of the fact that they're, they think that life is a certain way. And then as the story progresses, they become very, very violent and animalistic. And uh, it becomes quite intense. So that's a very good example. At the beginning, they are these schoolboys, very prim and proper schoolboys. And as they learn more about life, they become animalistic and barbaric and violent. So that's a good story to read. It's, I think there's a, at least one or two movies that have been made about that. And again, another reason why we have the journey from innocence to experience is for us to understand the world around us. Maybe we say, ah, now that's why I feel the way I do. And I felt differently when I was younger. So it helps us understand that life it's, it's complex. It's different. It's not what we thought it was. This is how life is. All right, so that's innocence to experience, coming of age, good and evil. And then another one, which is uh, another of my favorite um, types of stories, is rise and fall. I made a very bad circle there. Now, I actually saw a movie yesterday, which you guys can go see if you like, um, about Elvis. So the movie was Elvis, it's a very good movie. Um, and a movie about the rise and fall is usually about how someone starts small, they rise, they gain, whether it's money or fame or power, and they're doing really, really well. And then we see how perhaps at the end, things are not so good for them. And it's more of a story to allow us to see someone's journey through life. We can experience um, their highs and kind of experience that for ourselves. And because we've all been low sometimes, we can experience their lows. This is more about telling us about life. So this uh, theme is telling us what life is like. Uh, it's a message about society. So in the movie, I'm not going to give spoilers away, but we see Elvis starting from a, a simple child, learning about music to the great heights that he, he achieved. And then at the end, we see what happened later in life to him. And there are other examples of that. There's another um, great movie, which you can see called uh, Goodfellas, which is about a gangster. Gangsters are always fun. Uh, so we see someone join a criminal organization. They make money. They rise to the top of that. And then again, we see um, at the end how things go. And one more example there is, and some more re recent movie, is The Wolf of Wall Street with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Also, we see at the beginning how uh, Leonardo Ca DiCaprio's character um, is a small-time stockbroker, and then he does a lot of illegal things, but he gets a lot of money, and at the end, things come down for him. So it's a very interesting story to see happen and to see what happens to people in life and understand society. So that is rise and fall. Let's take a break for a second and see what you guys have uh, have sent in the uh, in the chat. So I see some things already. Um, all right, so I see Kalipan uh, Inka, Inka John, I hope I said that correctly, has sent us The Graduate, um, Toy Story 3, American Graffiti, Boyhood, all good movies. Um, for growing up movies, yes, 
Very, very good. So um, definitely American Graffiti is a story about teenagers that on one night, uh, they're almost at the end of high school and how they are going to go off on their separate ways and what they do. And The Graduate is about someone graduating there. I think they're in college. But yes, it's about growing up but in their late 20s. Very, very good. Let's see what else we have. Um, someone said this is an interesting topic and really helpful. I'm happy that you guys are enjoying. Someone has asked, may I know how I can describe the theme that the hero is not 100% good and evil is not 100% bad? Is there an expression for this theme? So someone's asking, is there a theme about someone about a hero that's not all good and a bad guy that's not all bad? And I would say that uh, we haven't looked at it yet, but for that, the theme could be, and let me make some space at the top here, The theme could be about an anti-hero. So it's more about a character. We discussed anti-heroes when we looked at characters. Um, we could take that anti-hero character and put it into any kind of theme. So there's not a specific theme about that, but we could take like the good versus evil theme and we have the anti-hero and the character shows us that he's not altogether good, he's not altogether bad, and that everyone has different layers inside them. So very good uh, question. Uh, um, then um, what else do we have? Someone's asking, a uh, main point of the story is theme. And that's correct, yes. So the main point, what the writer wants to tell you is the theme. They're using the story, they're using the characters and everything else to get the theme to you. And it's, it's important to realize that sometimes you can look for a theme, and if the story isn't well written, um, there's not going to be a theme. The theme won't really be easy to figure out. So don't think that uh, every single thing is going to have a perfect theme that you can understand. Some stories are badly written. There's no theme. It's hard to find it. All right, I think let's carry on um, with, an, with an interesting theme here, faith versus doubt. So faith versus doubt is about religion. Now, we're not making any comments about religion. This is an English course, not a religious course. But what faith versus, am I off screen? What faith versus doubt means is that someone is questioning what they believe. Do they believe in God or a higher power? Do they not? So that's a very big topic. And so that kind of thing, and I'm going to put it here, just to illustrate what the theme is asking. Mostly it's asking, is there a God? Is God good? What, what, what do I believe in? What is my religion? What Do I believe in my religion? Why does my religion say this? Why did this happen if there is a God? So there's lots of questions for faith versus doubt. And it all comes down to questions about God and questions about religion. And we can see why that theme is necessary in life because we all have those questions sometimes. And those answers are not easy. So we have to read a story or see a movie to understand those questions and to make sense of that. So doubt, the word doubt, if you're wondering, means to not know. So that's what we're saying. Should I have faith? Should I believe in religion and in a higher power? Or should I not know about that? So often movies that are about religion um, or about um, anything to do with religion, a priest, a rabbi, a imam, anything like that is about faith versus doubt. There's actually a really good movie called Doubt that you guys can look at that's all about, I'm not going to go into it because it's not the topic for here, but it's all about uh, stuff to do with the church and what people should believe in. So that's a really uh, interesting theme, and there's so many questions that people can ask about that. And another very interesting uh, theme is fate versus free will. Now, fate means it was meant to be. So I was meant to be at, at that place so that I could meet the girl and then fall in love. 
or free will means stuff just happens. I was there and it was a coincidence that the girl was there. There's no plan. It's just happening. And that's another big question about life. So fate means things, I'm just going to put here, happen for a reason. So things happen for a reason. Maybe it's a reason from a, a higher power. Maybe it's from God. We don't know. But that's what fate is. Free will means you decide. And we can see that is a very, very big theme. Because no one knows. Again, um, did I make the decision or was it meant to be? Um, there are some interesting movies that we can talk about here. One that you guys can look up that is a favorite of mine is something called serendipity. So that's a very big word, serendipity, which actually the word means um, a happy coincidence. And it's a really good movie. It's a love story as well. But it, it asks a lot of questions at the same time about uh, fate versus free will. And a movie that's the total opposite of this that I think shows this theme as well is, and it's one of my favorite movies, The Matrix. Well, the movie where we're supposed to be inside a giant simulation and we don't know, are we, are we making the decisions or is there a giant computer making the decisions? So these are big, big themes, lots of questions to ask here. Then an easier theme to look at is justice. So justice means that the good guys win, the bad guys, something bad happens to them. Something is um, that was done wrong is now put right. So a lot of law movies and law series and courtroom uh, stories are about justice. And the one famous book that you guys can look up is um, To Kill a Mockingbird. To kill a mockingbird. And this theme could ask many different questions. So when something happens, is it justice? Is it good that this guy gets put away? What if he killed the person that killed his family? Does that mean that he should go away? What about the guy that did the murder in the first place? So justice is not an easy theme. There's lots of questions we can ask about that. Is it right that he goes to jail? Is it right that he goes free? Who's to decide? So justice is a very big question as well. And that's why, again, there are lots of stories about it. Now, usually, if it's a courtroom story or a law movie, usually they kind of mix justice and good versus evil. And you want to see the, the good guys win and the bad guys lose. But justice itself is a much bigger theme. And there's lots more questions we can ask about. And before we uh, take all this off and do a few more and stop and look at the chat again, final one on this board is identity. Identity means who are you? That's the question we're asking with identity. Who are you? It's another very big question that we all have to answer at one point. And that's, again, why we have this as a theme. Everyone has to sometimes answer the question of, who are you? Who are you now? Maybe who you were then is different to who you are now. Who will you be in the future? So that's a very big question to ask. And so there are lots of stories about that. I'm going to just talk about one that we've talked about before. I'm just going to make an arrow up here. Um, the picture of Dorian Gray. So I've talked about this one before. I'll give a quick uh, um, summary again. So in the picture of Dorian Gray, we have this young guy, um, and there is a painting made of him. And when he does something bad or whatever, if he does something, he kills someone or he hurts someone, nothing happens to him. But the picture starts to change. And as he grows older, he stays the same. He stays young the picture starts to grow older. And as he does worse and bad things, the picture gets ugly and looks like a monster. And so the question is, 
you know, who is the real person? The person that his friends see is this nice young guy doing, the, they don't know he's doing the bad things, but they see this beautiful guy. But the real person in that picture is the monster. So it's asking a lot of questions about identity. Who is he? Who are we? Do we show a face to the world and then inside we're a different person? So identity as a theme has lots of questions. And if you want to know what happens in the end of Dorian Gray, um, I, don't want to, I don't want to ruin it. You guys can go read it or there's some movies and you can watch them. And it's very interesting to see what happens at the end. All right, let's go to the chat before we clean up. Uh, let's see what's happening here. Um, oh, someone's had a good example here. Marcella Onida, I hope I said that correctly, says sliding doors is a good example of the movie, uh, uh, of the theme Fate. And that's correct. So sliding doors, which is the movie with uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. And in her one timeline, she misses the door opening of her train. And so she doesn't see uh, her boyfriend cheating on her. And in her other timeline, she gets out the train, she sees her boyfriend cheating on her, and then we see how her two timelines uh, go. Yes, very good example, thank you. Um, Giselle Oliveira says, an example of faith versus doubt is the movie God Doesn't Exist. I haven't seen that movie, but it does sound very interesting. And yes, that is definitely going to be faith versus doubt. Um, and someone's asked, sir, can you say how to write answers for English literature exam question by theme? Because I'm the only one taking. Okay. So yes. Um, so the question is, when you are answering questions about theme in an English literature test, what do you do? Now, remember, and it's not on the board anymore, but we talked about how to identify theme. We said there were going to be maybe uh, character growth. There was going to be recurring elements and a deeper meaning. And all of those are going to be represented. So if you're in a, reading a story, there are going to be parts of the story that will show how the character changed. There might be parts of the story that show different elements. Um, maybe there is a, um, a recurring image that happens. Maybe there's, I'll give you a good example. In the story Macbeth, in the story of Macbeth, which we're, we're going to discuss, we may as well discuss it now. So the story of Macbeth, the theme is ambition. And whether ambition is a good thing or a bad thing, the dangers of ambition and what it can do if you push your, do things that are bad because you want to go higher. So in the Macbeth, one of the recurring elements is... Lady Macbeth, after the murder of the king, she keeps seeing blood on her hands. And this leads her, drives her crazy. So if we're writing a literature test and they're saying, what is the theme of this? Or um, we could use that in one of our paragraphs to say the theme of guilt or the theme of the dangers of ambition is shown by Lady Macbeth and the recurring element of blood on her hands because it shows how her ambition has led to her madness. And that's how we would use it. We would take an element and show how that element tells us about the theme. So that was a very good question. Thank you for that. So we've done our next uh, theme here, which is uh, ambition, or the dangers of ambition. And the next theme, let's just do it because it's an, a very obvious theme. And I didn't want to put it as number one because it is very, very overused. And that is the theme of love. And I am going to include another theme here as well, the theme of friendship. Now, love could mean lots of things. It could mean that uh, love conquers all. Lots of romantic comedies and romantic dramas talk about love conquers all. Uh, obviously, um, an example of this, or the, the most used example, I'm not a huge fan, is Romeo and Juliet. It shows us love, but there could be, you could question whether it's really a good love story, but it's about love. So love as a theme doesn't have to be about happily ever after. Obviously, Romeo and Juliet, 
don't end up happily ever after, but it's still about love. Um, and the reason I include friendship here, and I spelled it wrong, the reason I include friendship is to show that it doesn't only have to be romantic love. You can have stories about friends. Um, a lot of uh, coming of age, growing up stories are about friends as well, to show that, you know, that bond that you have with friends, that's also really important. And as you grow up, it can change or not, but it's still very, very important. And even though it's, it's not the best story in the world, um, I think it's called Grown Ups, shows how friends just have fun together. It's a story about friends. That's the theme. All right. Then uh, another great one that I want to do is Redemption. Now, the word redemption means you've done something wrong, all right? So you did something wrong or something bad is happening, and then you manage to make it right. You redeem yourself. You make it right. So a great example is to go back to our story about the guy that's uh, the drug addict at the beginning. He's definitely doing something wrong. He's a drug addict. And maybe he hurts people, maybe he hurts his family, maybe he hurts himself. But by the end, he's redeemed himself. He has conquered that uh, addiction and he has made it right. Redemption. That's why uh, stories about redemption are so important to us because we would like to believe that we've done things that are wrong. We can redeem ourselves. Sometimes it can even inspire people to redeem themselves, to do the right thing. So those are stories about redemption. And I think we'll do just two more. Let's do... Um... Okay, we're going to do just two more. I want to teach you guys a new word, which is a fun word that I like. Hubris. So hubris, as a word, means to be very proud, maybe too proud. To think you are better than other people. We could also say arrogant. To be very proud, to be very arrogant, to have hubris, to think you have all the answers, or to, for someone to think they have all the answers. And stories that are about hubris are about these people that think they know everything, and then they make these gigantic mistakes that have huge repercussions for everybody. And it shows us that, you know, maybe sometimes don't be so arrogant. Maybe ask for help or maybe don't do that. And one of the classic stories um, that has hubris as one of its main themes, and I'm sure everyone knows this, uh, this story, is Frankenstein, which is one of my favorite classic works. And most people think of Frankenstein as the giant monster that walks like that. But in the story, Frankenstein, or Frankenstein's monster, um, is actually a very eloquent person. He, he speaks well, and he talks about how he feels having been created uh, by Frankenstein. And he thinks that Frankenstein was very arrogant and didn't realize what he was doing. So it's a very interesting story. That's why I bring it up. I want you guys to read it because it's so good. So it's all about being arrogant, thinking you know everything, and Sometimes people don't. And the final theme that I want to do is revenge. And the reason I want to do this one is because this is not the same as justice. We looked at justice earlier, and a lot of people think that justice and revenge are the same theme, but they're not. So justice is, like we said, more about a law, a courtroom, a cop, and the bad guy, and trying to catch him so that there's justice. The, the right thing is done. Revenge is about something happened to you, something done that was wrong, and now you want to make someone else suffer. So it's very different to justice. So here, um, something happened to you. So someone did wrong to you, and you want to hurt them. And we talked about um, one of the great examples of this in our other class, which is the Count of Monte Cristo. 
So you can read the book, but it's a very long book. I don't suggest it. But you can watch the movies and see whether you think was the revenge right. Was it good for him to do the revenge or should he not have? Remember, these are not clean cut. None of these are about one thing. It's a theme and we can ask many questions about it. So is revenge good? Is revenge bad? Should he have done it? Should he not have done it? Should he have left it alone? Should he have gone on with his life? These are the questions that we would ask. All right, we have gone through quite a lot of themes. I'm going to take a look at the chat one more time um, to see if there's anything else here. Someone's uh, brought up a uh, Salome, and it shows invisible evil. So yes, that, that's definitely, that can also fit into another theme as well, but it could fit into the good versus evil theme. One thing I want to tell you is that we've looked at, I think, about 15 themes, give or take. There can be so many more themes in a story. Sometimes, like this, we can take a word, like the word ambition or the word um, nature, and then we can talk about that. So there are many stories just about man versus nature or just about nature in general. And what is, should we preserve nature or is nature supposed to be dominated by man? Great example of that is going to be like Avatar. So that's all about man versus nature. So there are many more themes than just the ones we've done today. But I do thank you all for joining us today and for sending such great examples. That has really been so good for that interaction. Um, remember, if you guys um, want to learn on Cambly, you're going to find so many teachers that can help you with exactly what you need. Uh, whatever it is, business English, um, basics, uh, adjectives, or uh, vocabulary, go to Cambly. You're going to find people just like me to help you. I think there's a link in the description for me if you want to have classes with me. And if you guys want to go now and sign up, if you're not signed up already, you can use this. as a discount code, go live, and you can get, I think, up to 36%. So go there now, start using it. And then I'm going to say one more time, thank you for joining us today. We're going to see you in another Cambly live session. Bye for now.